I mean, yeah. I don't know what it is, but thanks for bringing it. <laughs> it's a 1990 Nissan Skyline GTR. It's bone stock. It even has a stock air box. They've never seen right, stock, stock wheels, wheels yeah. on an R32. Right. Your flex game is strong. <laughs> this might sound crazy. Oh my God. Good thanks to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for bringing it. I mean, yeah. I don't know what it is, but thanks for bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> so. It is, uh, you know, economy car from the 90s. But no, kidding aside, you know, this always fascinates me because you've been involved with motorsports. I mean, you're like a brand name and a lot of guys that do their day job, they want nothing to do with anything like motorsports oriented or performance oriented when they're not working. Yeah. You on the other hand, like a lot of us, are just sick with this stuff. The joke is that we spend all day at the track taking pictures of cars or messing with cars and then later at dinner, we can't stop talking about cars. Right, you know, it's right. Like, can we talk about something else? No. So tell me about the car, what's your history with it and uh, What's the deal? It's a 1990 Nissan Skyline GTR. This is just something that was never meant for the US market. Right. For me, you know, being the Gran Turismo generation, growing up playing video games, the only way I was able to experience the car was watching videos, watching Best Motoring, watching all the content from Japan, mm -hmm. going to like Japanese supermarkets to get magazines, and of course playing video games. This one, I really wanted a clean copy. I didn't want one that was clapped out, modified in any way. I have modified it a little bit tastefully just to keep it on the road yeah. and basically just modernize it. it so what, what have you done? What, what are the upgrades? The suspension was blown out, so I put KW suspension of just the highest grade, you mm -hmm. know. It came with some aftermarket wheels, and mm -hmm. I actually restored stock wheels just to kind of put it back to what it was and in its best version. And it's interesting because when I take this to shows, when I drive it around, people look at it and they're like, whoa, what kind of wheels are those? Yeah. They've never seen right, stock, stock wheels, wheels yeah. on R32, right. you know, so I yeah. went out of my way to do that. If you want to see the engine bay, it's bone stock. It even has a stock airbox, and I feel like most people have never seen an R32 with a stock right, airbox. Right. If you look at R32s, if you look at GTRs, you would think that it came with two big green mushrooms <laughs> for our air filters, yeah. you know? I didn't remove any of the stickers or anything. Like, everything that came with the car, including the ETC card, for the Japanese toll roads. It okay. was stuffed into the mirror and it was still left in there, so I leave it in there. It's just kind of a fun thing. Okay. So this is something that I had to import and specifically for California, I had to legalize it for California use. Right. But yeah, it runs great. AC blows cold. I drive it really hard. Um, one of the things I'm really proud of is the fact that it got turned into a real Hot Wheels. Oh, and awesome. There's no question about it that it is my car, my Hot Wheels, uh, you know, my name's on it. Right. And this license plate that is left on the dash is my license plate. Okay. So, no, it's nice you put the Easter eggs in there so you, there's no mistake, it's your car. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's a kind of a fun little thing. And this one is uh, my son opened the package, so yeah. I get to at least show everyone what right. it looks like outside the package. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like, for example, this, I shot this in the local canyons near my house. Um, and then I shot uh, the HKS Group A R32 at the base of Mount Fuji. Okay. Yeah. But awesome. Kind of a fun little thing. So I finished my appraisal of Larry's R32 GTR. Now, let's be completely upfront. In case you didn't know this, I am not an expert on these cars, but Larry is, and he gave us the walk around and a general overview of the car, which is very helpful. So my job was made a lot easier because all I had to do is go around and assess the condition. So looking around the car, it obviously has the few modifications that Larry mentioned. It has different coilovers on it, different exhaust, the cats were added to get the California barcode and all that but it's been repainted and you can see they left the glass in when they repainted it. So you can see where they just taped off the weather strip around the windows. There's a couple of chunks of weather strip missing here and there uh, around these rear quarter lights. 
You can see they taped off around these windows instead of removing them. And you have to remember, this was just a used car at some point. Now they've become very collectible. And of course, you would probably do it a little bit differently given values today. But when it was painted in Japan, obviously, they just did a really nice job, not a concourse job. The main thing with these cars, like anything else, they have rust problems. This car is completely rust free. The strut mounts, the frame rails, everywhere you look on these cars for rust damage, there's nothing. So very nice, clean chassis, very nice stock original car. Again, as Larry pointed out, it hasn't had the airbox removed. It hasn't had different turbos. It hasn't had all the kind of stuff that the Fast and Furious crowd likes to play with on these cars. Another aspect of collectability is notoriety. This car is well known. There's a Hot Wheels of this car. Its owner is very well known in motorsport circles and in this general crowd. These people that like these late model performance cars, of course, I'm saying late model because I'm old, but you know, this 80s and 90s stuff is really coming on strong and Larry is a brand. He knows his stuff. He's known worldwide for his work. The other thing we need to think about is California is a huge marketplace. People in California love these cars. However, to import one and get a California barcode to make it emissions legal in California is a royal pain in the ass. So even if it doesn't cost you a lot of money, it takes a lot of time. And for the kind of people that are buying these cars today, they don't want to waste the time doing it. So I'm going to hop in and check out the interior and we'll give it a start. But before I do that, here's that barcode I was talking about. They scan that when you go to a test station. This, ladies and gentlemen, is money right there. Let's fire it up. So obviously it's a Japanese car that's been incredibly well maintained. It starts right up. Sounds like it runs like a new car. The air conditioning I just kicked on, the air conditioning blows cold. The steering wheel is incredibly nice. Uh, the seats that are very easily worn, this material does not hold up very well. The seats, the door panels, everything is exceptionally nice. Again, it'd be hard to reasonably fault this car. It shows 64,000 kilometers from new. That's low mileage for one of these. It's just a great example of an R32 GTR. So I finished my appraisal of Larry's R32 GTR. And to do that, beyond Larry's expertise and his general overview of the car, I also phoned a friend who's very knowledgeable in these cars, and I checked with a big importer who specializes in these cars. So I feel like I have a really good handle on its value by crowdsourcing. So I'm gonna go pull Larry back in here and see if my number matches up with his or not. Hey, Larry. Where are we at? Oh, man, you, <laughs> I don't know if you look nervous or you're like, you know. I forgot to say one thing. Let me guess. It's signed by the godfather yes, of the GTR. Yes. See, I knew Tamira it. Tamira signed. Yes, yes. So he's a good friend of mine. Okay. Um, luckily, I don't have any of those. Yeah. <laughs> luckily for me, um, I've been doing a lot of work with Nissan recently. So we helped launch the new Z. We did the global launch photos okay. for it. Yep. And I kid you not, tomorrow I'm getting on a plane, flying to Japan, and I'm going to drive a Nismo R35 around and shoot a bunch of stuff in Japan with Nissan. Awesome. So well, I'm like a Nissan head, you know? Your flex game is strong. <laughs> I mean, just to come in here, I mean, you came in hot. Yeah. <laughs> You gave me a great overview of the car. Yeah. Obviously, you know these cars very well, better than I do. Um, but I did phone a friend, email a friend that, you know, people that know about these things. But before I give you my number, mm -hmm. I want to know your number because you probably watch these things like a hawk. So what do you think your car is worth? I only recently kind of looked at the numbers because I actually moved this over to Haggerty Insurance. We like plug, that, plug. appreciate that. Yeah, and the nice thing on the website, it actually kind of gives you an over under mm -hmm. of what it potentially could be. Right. Safe bet, I think 55,000. 55,000 probably pre-COVID, yeah. uh, maybe without a barcode, without Hot Wheels, all that kind of stuff. I mean, uh, my friend that I called, that knows a lot about these. He just bought one that's not as nice. He paid $62,000 for it. Okay. So I think this might sound crazy, but yeah. in today's world, given the notoriety of the car, who you are, what the car is, I think it's 85 grand. And I think from there, it is just like that. Oh because, my God. I mean, you've I'm done so all the right stuff. Away. Yeah. That is... Unless you'll sell it for 55, then, I, <laughs> then we'll reverse. So, so, okay, 85, it doesn't matter. 
honestly. It could be worth 8,000. It doesn't matter right. to me. You know, I'm gonna keep it forever. I'm gonna love it. I'm going to enjoy it. It was never meant to be something where I buy and sell whatever, you know? What am I gonna even get for 85 at this I was just point? Gonna, I was just gonna say, yeah. your enthusiasm for this car and your love for this car and the fact that you've had a passion for it since you were a little kid, yeah. there's you could go spend a million dollars or $2 million on a car and not have that same passion or, or joy. Yeah, so I'll tell you what. When I went to HKS 2020 Tokyo Auto Salon, to shoot that photo on the Hot Wheels set. Yeah. And then when I came back, you know, the Hot Wheels set came out, I thought to myself, how cool would it be one day if I could recreate the actual set in real life? Yeah. Well, HKS, for whatever reason, they shipped their Group A R32 over to the US, and I actually had a chance to recreate that photo in real life, yeah. you know? So <laughs> they actually met in real life for once. Yeah, and see, that's the thing, like, cars are just the conduit for us. It's really, it's your experience and the excitement and the love of this stuff. So you've got something you love and you're passionate about and you're gonna hand it down to your kids and you've got the Hot Wheels and yeah. it's yours and, and I hope at some time in the future you're able to complete the set and uh, really really go crazy. Uh, with that said, I do have to call my Haggerty agent to bump up the value yeah. of this thing right. <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, so. well, that's a good problem to have, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, No, well, it really is. Legit, in my high school yearbook, you know, when you graduate, you kind of put a goal, whatever. My yeah. goal was to own a Skyline GTR. It was, uh, you know, kind of a fun joke back yeah. then, but now I have it and it's... But who's laughing now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, I, there's no way I would sell this car. It is part of being a 